Hi, I'm Vaz. Welcome to my story. Three times during my life, I've lost 50 or more pounds. All it took was for me to realize that foods like this are what should fuel your life. Hi, and welcome to today's Vaz's Corner. In the past, I've showed you how to make cauliflower pizza crust. Today, I'm going to use the same cauliflower to make buns for my vegan burgers. Now, my vegan burgers, I had looked for a recipe on the internet, and everyone I found said they came out pretty dry, and that wasn't going to make me happy, so... I had some sweet potatoes that I had bought, so I baked those and scooped out the flesh. I got about two to three cups of sweet potato flesh, and then I mixed that with one 15 ounce can of rinsed and drained black beans. I didn't mash up the beans, I left them whole. I also mixed in probably four Bella mushrooms and one small white onion and I also put a habanero pepper. I threw those into my trusty food processor and mixed that all together. I also put one quarter cup uh, ground sunflower seeds. Now I mixed those all up and I patted them out in the shape of hamburgers. I got six or eight burgers from that and I cooked them in the oven at 350 degrees for about 45 minutes. That's pre-making those burgers. When I go to actually eat them, I warm them up again in the oven about 10-15 minutes, making sure both sides are nice and brown. And these burgers stayed pretty moist. I've also reincorporated some low-fat cheeses back into my diet. And I like to melt a piece of cheese on top of my vegan burger. I don't eat meat, so I've been looking for other sources of protein. Now, as far as the cauliflower pizza crust went, this time I'm going to use the same type of cauliflower to make the buns for those burgers. And then I cut up some tomato. I got a nice sized tomato here. And I'll put a piece of lettuce. I'll also put some of the spicy mustard on there, which adds no calories to the mix. And I'll, on the other side where I put the tomato, I'll use some of my mayonnaise, which a whole tablespoon is only 35 calories, but I'm not even using more than a teaspoon when I eat one of these burgers. I pre-cooked in the microwave my steaming bag cauliflower florets and just looking at the nutrition facts I'll let you know that this will give me over a hundred percent of my vitamin C this whole bag will make four hamburger buns so to speak and I will eat this whole bag tonight for dinner with that I'll get four grams of dietary fiber if you noticed last week, I mentioned the Harvard 10 to 1 rule. Well, the total carbs in this will be 16 carbs from this. And four of those are good dietary fiber. So that easily fits the 10 to 1 rule. The whole bag only has 100 calories and 100 milligrams of sodium. So both of those are within my tolerance levels. And it will also generate 4 grams of protein to the mix. That will get mixed with a half cup or so of the shredded cheese, which actually is two ounces of a block, low-fat, sharp cheddar. And once I shred it up, it fills about a half a cup. With that, I'll use my typical two tablespoons of flax to add even more fiber to the mix. The buns themselves will give me 10 grams of fiber and 
approximately 20 grams of protein. I will gain about 13 grams of fat from the flax seeds, oils, and from the lower fat cheese. Each ounce of the cheese has four and a half grams of fat compared to nine grams for regular cheddar cheese. So I've already steamed this in the bag. I just have to put it in my mixer and I'll, I'll show you what's next. This little mixer is awesome. It chops up everything just nice and it works real good. They only cost $19.99. It was a great bargain. I didn't have to buy it. It was given to me, as I've mentioned, by my cousin Lori as a Christmas present. And I greatly appreciate it. I use it every day, all the time. Chop vegetables with it. I use it for this cauliflower to rice it. A few pulses and you've got rice cauliflower. Now these bags, like I pointed out once with the uh, spaghetti, are actually only 12 ounces. And you would think it'd be a pound, 16 ounces, but just like with the whole wheat pasta I showed you before, not the case. And I've learned using this uh, mixer that it's made to pulse. So all you gotta do is pulse it a few times, done. Now that much cauliflower is riced. I'll put that in this bowl for a second while I do the rest of it. Okay. Scoop this out because I don't want it to turn to total mush. And then I'll put the last few pieces of cauliflower in and rice those as well. It makes about four regular sized buns which fit very well with the vegetarian burgers. Like I said, they stay pretty moist, so I'm very happy with the recipe of sweet potato black bean. You can put whatever else you want in it, but I put my mushrooms, onions, and peppers in it to get some vitamin C and the most cancer-fighting benefit I can. Okay, that's all the cauliflower rice. That quick. You steam the bag for five minutes, let it sit for a few minutes to cool off and then you rice it as I've just done and of course the next step I have to squeeze the water out of this so we'll put this over to the side that's why I have this cheesecloth right here I know I've done this demonstration before but I'll show you one more time this has proved to be a very popular recipe I get a lot of requests for the cauliflower pizza crust and just over the last week or so I've develop these buns and vegetarian burgers. Like I said, I don't eat meat anymore, so it's helped a lot. In fact, watch how much water comes out, just like before. And that's what the goal is. We want to squeeze out as much water as we can without going crazy. And then we'll mix the cauliflower and the other ingredients. You can see quite a bit of water comes out. If I had to guess, I'd say it's probably 25% of the weight by volume is water until you squeeze it out. You can see it's coming out pretty good. That was frozen cauliflower. Once again, you could use fresh or frozen cauliflower to do this. Alright, that's pretty good. So I probably got a good solid cup of water out of that. Now I'll use this bowl to mix my ingredients. You see the dough-like consistency of the cauliflower, but once you break it back up, it's still riced. It just looks like a ball of dough because you squeezed it in the cheesecloth to get the water out. I gotta grab my other ingredients, so I'll be right back. Okay, now I have all the ingredients. I have our cauliflower, one egg, ground flax, freshly ground. That acts as a binder. All these other ingredients act as binders. The cheese helps to bind it. Again, two ounces, low-fat cheese. 
chatter it is this time. And one egg. You hear Tweety in the background. She's a good pet. I lost my other pet this week, Carly Davidson, my beloved Rottweiler. I'm going to show you some pictures of her in, in the interim between recipes and lecture. Not to make you feel bad for me, but I only bring that up because the last episode I mentioned I would fill you in on the results of my blood test. Well, Harley passed away. I was digging a grave for her out back when the phone rang and I saw it was my doctor only two days after I had taken my blood test. So I answered the phone and she said, how you doing? I said, I guess not good if you're already calling me. And she giggled and she said, no, it's quite the opposite. That high fiber diet that you've been eating has actually lowered your co overall cholesterol to 138 from 155. However, your LDL has dropped from 93 to 62, and your triglycerides are only 43 now. And you have the best uh, vitals of any one of my patients, and the way you're eating must be great because everything's working perfect. So I just wanted to fill you guys in on that because I said I would. I also had them check my vitamin D level, which was at about 40 milligrams per deciliter, or whatever the numbers are, it was 40 was what the number was. Okay, so now I got that mixed up. I'll show you this. That's what it turns into. Now I'm going to take this baking sheet, spray the baking sheet. Let's use as much of this as we can. It just barely makes me four buns, so I got to use every bit of it. That's that 12 ounces. When I used to buy that, it was 16 ounces. But four less ounces now. But before I was using it for pizza crust, so I didn't really notice when I picked up the bag that the new one was four ounces less. So now I just take these, like always, and I press these pretty flat. Just shape them in the shape of a bun, basically a hamburger bun, whatever you want to call it. Put four of those on here. They bake a little faster than the pizza crust because they're much smaller. But still, I bake them at 350 for about, I don't know, 30 minutes maybe. It still takes a few minutes to cook these. You want them to get nice and brown. And these, I've done them both ways. One day I left them in there about 40 minutes and I didn't flip them. Another time I made them, I left them in there for 30 minutes. But at about 25 minutes or so, I flipped them over, and for the last five minutes, I browned the other side. And they came out nice. They come out nice and pretty dry. The burgers are moist enough. Plus, I put a big slice of this tomato on it. I put a piece of lettuce on it. Like I said, I use mustard and mayonnaise, so... They don't add many calories to it, but it actually makes me feel like I'm eating a hamburger from the old days, and it's completely vegetarian. The whole meal probably gives me close to 40 grams of protein, so it's quite a good protein mix. It does give me a little bit of fat, but so far today I've only eaten oatmeal and a salad, so I've basically eaten no fat all day. So I will get most of my daily intake of fat from this meal. Okay, well you see how that is. I'm going to pop these in the oven and when they're done I'll get right back with you. Let me clean up my mess again. Okay, what I've got now is those buns. They're pretty flat. They're more like flatbread, but they came out really nice this time. I take one of these, put it on the plate, 
Put some mustard on it. Get a little zing going in it. I'll put a piece of lettuce on there. And then I take one of these veggie burgers I warmed up and melted a piece of cheese on top of. Now I'll put a nice slab of this big thick tomato on top of that. Then I'll take a little scoop of this mayonnaise, mayonnaise, put that on there. Then I'll top it with another one of these. And there you have it. Not quite a hamburger, but it reminds me of one, and now in my vegan lifestyle, that makes me happy to eat like this. So I hope you've enjoyed that part of today's episode. I'm going to go eat this delicious burger. In fact, I may take some of my chocolate banana ice cream that you saw me make last week, mix it with some almond milk, and make a nice little milkshake to go with this that will have much lower calories than the milk alternative. Okay, have a good night and enjoy your dinner as well. And I hope you're all jumping on the healthy eating bandwagon. It's the only way to go. There's no magic pill. We've all seen shows on TV where people are exercising like crazy and they make it look fun, they're dancing around. Well, even those people aren't burning enough calories doing that exercise to lose as much weight as I have. The caloric intake is more important. Maybe 80% of the weight loss journey is what you eat, not the exercise that you do. Exercise can only bring you to a certain point. And if you think you're going to exercise like those people who are working out like professional athletes, basically, for the rest of your life, after you spent the first part of your life never doing any exercise, then, in my opinion, you're just fooling yourself. I have great willpower, and I know... I'm not going to spend two hours working out every day for the rest of my life. But I can enjoy tasty, yummy foods that I make myself, but that have healthy ingredients, and I can continue that journey for the rest of my life. I do do moderate exercise, but it's not that much. I'm also not special. Anyone can do what I did. All you have to do is train yourself what foods to eat. And I'm just one source of guidance in that direction. You should continue to educate yourself, or else you're going to be back on the yo-yo dieting span. You're going to do this for a while, and then you're not going to do it. I myself once watched Fat, Sick, and Almost Dead. It was about juicing. Awesome movie. He lost a lot of weight. He motivated another guy, Phil, to also lose a bunch of weight, which is awesome. And I tried that for 10 days. I lost like 40 pounds in less than two weeks, but guess what? As soon as I started to eat food again, back it came. And this, this was the time that pushed me to 300 pound mark. So this time, I don't deny myself food. I eat three meals a day and I eat a couple snacks a day, so I'm never hungry. I always have a full stomach or I'm in the process of digesting what I've eaten. I eat foods like oatmeal for breakfast that take a while to digest, so I stay full until I have a piece of fruit mid-morning and then I'm full till lunchtime when I eat a big salad or maybe yesterday, as you know, I made my veggie burgers which have my reincorporated cheese in them. So I don't want to eat cheese today like I did yesterday. I don't want to make that a daily habit again, so Today I had oatmeal for breakfast, I'll have a big salad for lunch, and I'm going to have some whole wheat pasta I made with collard greens for dinner. So that's how it goes along. It becomes easier and easier though because you learn what's good and what's not good. And as this year has progressed, which will be the second year of my journey, 
I eat way less sugary stuff and I don't even eat as much fruit. I'm more into the vegetables which are lower calorie and they have more nutrients in them. And it just becomes easier and easier. I also continue to educate myself all the time. The the way I got motivated in the beginning is I watched Three Steps to Incredible Health on PBS. It's a free show. It lasts two or three hours. I sat there and watched it, and the person who puts it on is called Dr. Joel Furman. You should all check out his website. He has m uh, much more information than I can give you, and he's an actual physician who used nutritional eating in his practice to reverse heart disease and reverse type 2 diabetes, get his patients off medications completely, and give them a good quality of life. People to realize you can do it too, and healthy eating is the message that needs to get across. The United States of America is the fattest country in the world. We don't need to be that. We should be the healthiest country in the world. Other countries look up to the United States. We should be the example for the world and eat healthy and be in awesome shape, all of us, and live a good quality of life until our last days, not be sick for the last 20 years of our life and live in a convalescent home, have multiple strokes, be dying from heart disease and diabetes. We can reverse all of that if we just get the message to others that healthy eating is the way to go. As you move along in this process of eating good, nutritious foods, in fact, Dr. Furman's formula is health equals nutrition over calories. And he puts foods like kale and collard greens at a thousand on his scale of nutritional um, weighing of foods. And they're followed closely by spinach and broccoli and different vegetables. That's because those foods are high in phytochemicals. Early on we all knew about macronutrients which are protein, carbohydrates, and fat. In the early 1900s some scientists discovered all the vitamins and minerals which are macronutrients. But in the last few decades it's been discovered through nutritional science that there's thousands of phytochemicals which interact with everything else inside of our bodies to make absorption of what we eat happen and make processing of what we eat happen. And those are just as important as the micro and macronutrients. And that's how Dr. Furman's scale works. He weighs the nutritional value of the macro, micro, and phytochemicals in all foods against their caloric content to say if you ate the calories from this food, you get the greatest absorption of nutrients and the greatest bombardment of nutrients through your system for the calories you take in. And that's his theory behind nutritional eating. But as I say, he's an actual family physician who's used this in his practice for 20 or 30 or more years and actually had patients who have re completely reversed heart diseases I have or gotten rid of all their medications and now they're living a nice quality of life. I think you should include your doctor this whole process. One regret I have is I was so embarrassed by my own tremendous obesity in the beginning that I didn't have a blood test when I started so I don't have those results to compare. At the six month mark when I had lost between 90 and 120 pounds depending what I actually weighed when I started. I know what I weighed then but I don't really know what I weighed when I started. So I took a blood test then and I was already healthy. The most recent one I took is six months more after that and my results were even better than they were but I already had a reasonable range of everything at the six month mark. I know I lost a minimum of 92 pounds at six months but like I said the last time I actually stepped on a scale was October 12th 2012 at which point I weighed 268. Well I refused to step on a scale again after that but I ate like a pig 
the next three months, I made myself all the time macaroni and cheese and foods that were high fat. I ate a lot, drank a lot of milk. I ate ice cream all the time, cheese all the time. I made sandwiches. I ate way too much food. If I got up in the night, I'd probably go eat something from the refrigerator. I never do that anymore. So anyway, I'm guessing I really weighed 300, and if that's the case, at the six-month mark, I had already lost about 120 pounds. And that being the case, I have my Facebook page scrolling here on the side, the web address, and anyone who would go to my, my story Facebook page and like my page... I will send them one of the free DVDs I'm now creating, which includes my 20 favorite recipes that I've developed over the last year, including things like my collards and blueberry muffins I've been making, and other foods like that. My veggie burgers are there, the stuff I made on this week's episode, last week's episode, my ice cream, non-dairy ice cream, and things along those lines. In fact, the blueberry muffins I gave to my brother this week because I think oatmeal is very important, but he does can't stomach eating oatmeal. Some people don't like the texture of oatmeal. I said, well, how about if I give you some of my blueberry muffins? They have oatmeal in them, but you won't even know it's in there. And they're high fiber. They're loaded with antioxidants because I put a lot of blueberries in them. They do have some sugar, so that'll help you as it helped me to transition from the American diet loaded with salt and sugar to a healthier way to eat. And if you eat these for breakfast, you'll be starting your day with good nutritious food. So he agreed. I brought him six muffins, and in exchange, he's helping me to create some artwork for posters that I'm going to use as I go on a lecture circuit to senior centers around our state and maybe other states to tell the seniors of the healthy eating benefits and different recipes that they can easily consume to help them reverse their own heart disease and type 2 diabetes and hypertension and things along those lines. I've got my brother on the healthy eating lifestyle and hopefully he's able to continue along it but at least he's learning some information as you all have from watching my show I might not always translate it the way I want you to understand it because I do a lot of continued education on my own on the internet from different sources and things become second nature to me that I forget you don't know and I might not always make the correct connections on what I start to tell you and how it finishes up, but the whole point is to replace as many non-healthy foods and get rid of sodium in your diet, get rid of unhealthy fats in your diet. And You got the point, I tell you it all the time, but replace those with healthier foods like fruits, vegetables, and healthy fats from flax or seeds or nuts or healthy oils. You can still use olive oil. I don't. You could try coconut oil. I sometimes use that, but I use less and less. I almost never salt my food anymore because I use natural spices that don't have sodium in them, and I use habaneros a lot now, which pump up the flavor. I don't use so many that they're burning my tongue or anything, but they do pump up flavor, so do onions and I prefer to use those now to flavor my foods. The longer it goes, the easier it gets. Like I said, there's no magic pill. You do have to learn to eat healthy, but once you do, you'll have unlimited energy and your vital signs will all be good. Your doctor will be smiling too when you come in the office and they'll be excited to share the information of your testing results with you. Well, I hope this is an informational piece that motivate you to jump on the healthy bandwagon and again if you go to my Facebook page I'll be happy to supply you with a free uh, dietary DVD and we can also discuss things there I can learn from you you can learn from me and we can share information so 
Have a great week, and I'll get back to you with the next episode. Thanks for watching. Vaz over and out.